Hey guys, my name is Siobhan. I'm a first year medical resident and welcome to my vlog or welcome back. I can't believe that I'm already updating you about the first month of being a doctor. It's flown by. I did a month in gastroenterology, so I'm going to tell you about the best parts, the worst parts, craziest things I've seen, and the most embarrassing moment I've had so far. So first an update about how residency's been going so far. So I feel like I'm getting used to the role. I Oh, I have a new way of introducing myself. I now say, hi, my name's Siobhan. I'm a resident doctor. So I think it, you know, is still somewhat informal because I use my first name, but then I say I'm a resident doctor so that I'm not being confused uh, for any other role. So I think that's working for me and I feel pretty good about it. All right, so a quick primer for those of you who don't know. Gastroenterology, or GI, is a subspecialty of medicine that looks at your whole digestive tract. So everything from going down your throat, into your stomach, and then your intestines, and all the different organs that come off of it. So your liver, or your gallbladder, um, your pancreas, things like that. Um, I can give you a sense of what a typical day is like for me on this service, in the gastroenterology service. So basically I get to the hospital around 8 a.m. We have a special group team room, and so I meet with the med students, residents, the fellows, so they're the ones who've done at least four years of residency and have decided to specialize in uh, GI. Um, and so at that point, um, we run through the list of patients that we've got, and that's helpful. You know, we decide on what the issues are, we divide up the patients, who's seeing who that day, and then all of a sudden we scatter and go and see our patients. And then it's a bunch of sort of classic doctory things. You know, we check on their lab work and we do physical exams and talk to them, see what issues are happening, talk to the nurses, talk to the team. And at that point, we get together before lunchtime and sort of tidy things up so we know what's going on on the ward. But in the meantime, a couple other things are going on, which is what makes this such a busy day. Um, so one thing is that Part of the team is scoping, which means they're putting cameras down people's throats or um, doing colonoscopies, so going up the other way. Um, and it's pretty cool because when you get to watch, you can see immediately what the issue is. You can see if someone's bleeding or actually even just seeing what the inside of us humans look like. Um, is pretty crazy. So you get a sense of how things move and how the stomach looks so wrinkly. And it's weird to think that I actually have a stomach that looks that wrinkly all the time. So it, it's, yeah, it's very cool. Um, but the other thing that we do during the day is we're waiting for consults. So people from the emergency department or from different parts of the hospital come and they'll phone us up and say, okay, so um, we have this patient and we're worried that they are bleeding from their colon. So um, you guys are the colon experts, send them over here, take a look, what do you think? So that's a typical consult and um, I'm trying to get faster but honestly consults still take me a long time because I want to be thorough. Um, so like maybe an hour to an hour and a half. So that's sort of what the day's like, sort of a mixture of all sorts of different things. You sort of follow the same patients for a period of time so you get to know them well, but you never really know what's coming. Maybe a new console, maybe you go down and see a scope. You never know. Best thing. Man, there've been so many things. It's been incredibly exciting, such a well-supported month. I've loved it. Um, but I think the coolest thing is now having med students that I get to teach and get to help look after. So it's a bit of a role reversal. Um, I'm starting to see what an incredibly valuable role they play on the team. I always thought that as a med student, I was slowing things down and making things harder on the residents because they had to explain things to me. But really, I think med students bring enthusiasm. They bring a thoroughness. So um, they make us think about patients in a different way or they get different information because they spend longer talking to them sometimes. Okay, most embarrassing moment. So most of these services, most of us um, communicate with WhatsApp and like you don't put patient names or anything confidential down, but you know, just saying where we're meeting or if you had a little question, you put it in there. So we have a GI WhatsApp group, but I also have a family WhatsApp group and you can start to see where things are going. 
So my mom and I went and did a bunch of shopping for clothes so that I had new doctor's outfits. <laughs> and so I've been excited about trying on different things and different combinations. So I've been sending her pictures each day as an update. And I was walking out of the bathroom, had a moment between patients and decided, oh, there's a mirror. I'll just snap a picture. And I was sort of making like a silly face and sent her just being like, oh, here's an update of what I'm wearing. What do you think? So super girly, like, Heading to your mom and of course I send it to the GI team oh my gosh I was so embarrassed the minute I clicked send I just knew what had happened and I tried to immediately go back and delete and say no come back <laughs> but I couldn't and after I deleted it on my phone I realized it only deleted on my phone and it didn't delete it to anyone else in the group um, so I sort of had to face everyone and make a joke about it, like, oh, ha ha ha, yeah, I can't believe that happened, so funny. But actually inside, I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> oh boy. Craziest thing. Um, well, um, we had this totally healthy guy who came in, and it turns out that he had this gigantic piece of steak just stuck in his throat. Um, <laughs> so we actually had to go down there with a scope, well not me, but it was my staff who did it, um, and had to take little like, kind of like pincers and try to pull the steak out, which is actually pretty dangerous for him. So there was like a really good reason that our parents always told us to chew our food. So <laughs> Well, another really cool experience is getting to do paracentesis. So that's basically when people have these really big abdomens and they're full of fluid, um, usually when their liver is not doing so well and fluid sort of seeps out into the abdomen, sometimes we actually need to drain it. So you put in a needle and put in a little catheter and that drains the fluid into these big bags. Um, and it was crazy. I drained off one man 15 liters of fluid. So he was walking around with 15 liters on him all the time and he was just so thankful. <laughs> um, you know, he said he could breathe so much better and move so much better and just even stand up. So um, satisfying to be able to do that. But honestly, I was shocked that there was that much in his belly. Okay, serious talk. Um, one thing that really shocked me coming into med school and residency was seeing how chronic alcoholism could really, really hurt people. And I know it sounds obvious, we know, okay, it's not good for your liver, but you don't really see what it's like for people when they've destroyed their liver. Um, and it's not just alcohol that can do this, but it's the, that's the main thing that we see in the hospital. Um, and they become cachectic, so so skinny, and these huge big bellies that are just full of fluid, like that I was saying that we end up tapping. And it's, a, it's an image that we don't see. On cigarette cartons, they show us, you know, teeth and they show you what cancer looks like and they show you pictures to dissuade you. But no one talks about what happens when someone really abuses alcohol. So, anyway, okay, off my soapbox. So you might ask, what's coming up next? Um, I'm actually super excited because this weekend I'm moving to a new condo, brand new, first people to be living in there. And then I'm also starting a new block, so I'm starting a rotation which is outpatient internal medicine. I'm not really sure what it's all about yet, but I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. I think it's patients who aren't quite sick enough to get admitted to hospital get sent to this rapid assessment clinic so we can try to help them before they get sick enough to go to the hospital. But again, I'll, I'll let you guys know a little bit later. So. For now, I just wanted to say thank you so, so, so much for all of you who've subscribed, who've commented, who've sent me private messages, and who've just been part of this journey so far. I love that it's making me be reflective and think in the moment, and I just feel so much support in this crazy transition and new time. So thank you, thank you. It really means so much to me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to follow all my experiences as a new medical resident.